today's topic is resolve, on balance, legal barriers to immigration are more harmful than beneficial to society. I'm going to start out with the wording, talk about the topic as a whole a little bit, move from there and talk about some specific arguments, and from there to answering particular questions about the topic that some people brought up. So, for starters, the topic says on balance. And it's an on balance topic, which means that you don't need to prove that barriers in general are always bad or that barriers in general are always good. It's a question of what affects on balance society as a whole. Now, whether society means society which has legal barriers to immigration, or the society means the multiple entities on either side of the emigration to immigration, is certainly up for debate. And that can change who wins a debate when both sides are proving the same argument is true. So we do want to be aware of how that plays out. On balance also has to be balanced somehow, has to have some kind of metric to measure it. And I think that one of the easiest ways for you to do that is probably to go ahead and just figure out what a world with versus a world without would look like for many topics. For this topic, it's more a world with more or a world with fewer. Technically, these are not the same thing. One could argue that we do have too many barriers already, but that in a world where we have this many barriers, it is better to strengthen them than to have ineffective barriers. So that could be a thing, but generally speaking, an easy way for both sides to measure on balance on this particular topic is to ask if on average countries had more barriers to immigration or fewer barriers to immigration, which would be better? And if on balance, we would be better off with fewer barriers, then they're probably not beneficial to society. Legal barriers to immigration can be defined collectively or separately. Now we are talking about legal barriers. We're not necessarily talking about physical barriers, and we're not necessarily talking about legal barriers to entry to the country at all. Immigration is a legal term, though because this topic is not specific to any one country, it can mean different things in different places. For instance, in the United States, the term illegal immigrant is actually an oxymoron. Immigrant actually implies permanent legal residential status. In other countries, immigration means different things. There are many different models for different places. So you can choose to define it narrowly or broadly. Generally speaking, the pro side is going to want to define it narrowly. They're going to want to focus specifically on barriers to people coming for an unspecified amount of time with the intent to remain and to work. That's not what immigration always means, but that's the meaning that's most productive for the pro side. Khan wants a broader definition of immigration. Khan would like to be able to talk about this topic in terms of anybody entering this country from another country, regardless of how they intend to come here, how urgent their coming here is, or whether or not they intend to stay. So for instance, barring refugees or barring people who are passing through on their way to another country might be part of this topic or might not. Also, a legal barrier. Barrier can be defined as something that's being intended to keep out. A barrier can be a question of intent. That a legal barrier is something to block immigration. And that is the definition that Khan wants because it makes it easy for them to prove that it can be harmful to society. Pro has a slightly more generous definition they want for barrier. They can say a legal barrier is something you set up as not an impassable wall, but more of a hurdle, a kind of obstacle that you are meant to overcome. That having a longer path to citizenship is creating more of a legal barrier than a shorter path to citizenship, but that having these kinds of barriers is useful. You can take Thailand, for instance, on this one. Thailand has a lot of immigration laws, and it's created a lot of barriers. 
these barriers are not meant to be insurmountable. They're meant to be easy to get over, but they are still barriers that are created. So a legal barrier to immigration in Thailand can simply be how long you commit to staying there, how much you are willing to spend on that. Thailand is trying to attract wealthy foreign retirees at present, not in the sense of its temporary tourism industry, but to stay as semi-permanent residents. And the process for doing that is fraught with lots of newly created legal barriers. These barriers are created to be bypassed, but they are still created as potentially barriers. And whether that counts as a legal barrier to immigration or simply a legal way of funneling immigration in a particular direction is certainly up for debate. Legal barriers might include quotas. They probably don't include bans on travel, bans on tourism, bans on business and people who are intending to stay. Those aren't questions of immigration. The other thing too is we need to look at what we mean by society. Because whether or not we have to consider just the society the immigration is coming into or whether we need to consider the society that people are leaving decides whether arguments like brain drain become a factor. It decides whether arguments like an obligation to the country that people are leaving is important. It decides whether the people who are considering coming to the country but are not in the country yet count as part of society for purposes of this debate. It also decides whether or not third parties matter. You can make the argument, if you're talking about society as more of a global society, that these legal barriers have effects on countries beyond just the ones that are having people emigrate out of them and immigrate into another country. In particular, you can look at people passing through the EU, passing through Central America. You can look at how countries who watch how refugees from neighboring countries are treated and how that affects what they do to avoid or accelerate their potential refugee crises. All of these are things that can factor into this. Society is a broad and nebulous term. Generally speaking, it's going to be harder for a team to narrow that definition down than it is to broaden it. So if you have impacts that come from a wider definition of society, you should usually be comfortable winning it unless it is abusive. On the other hand, if you have a very narrow definition of society, you need to be able to weigh it against impacts that happen in a broader definition of society, or you need to be able to hold the line and explain why defining society beyond the society which would be creating the legal barriers to immigration is bad. Again, it's important to keep in mind that immigration laws vary hugely around the world, and this is not a nation-specific topic. A lot of people, when they hear this topic, will think about the United States, but the United States is probably a uniquely inaccurate country to use for this. It's a country without a national language. It's a country with a fairly wide variety of national origins present in it. Calling the U.S. a nation of immigrants is inaccurate and has its own set of problems with it, which are beyond the scope of this talk. But there is a fair deal of immigration in United States history that you don't see in other countries. And that's reflected in how a lot of laws are created, whether they deal with birthright citizenship, whether they deal with work visas, whether they deal with getting rid of certain older immigration quotas. There are a lot of things that are unique about that that this topic should not be about Mexican border walls. It should not be about U.S. immigration in general. But at the same time, there are a lot of other situations in a lot of other countries that are fairly niche cases. So rather than picking another country to focus on instead, you really have three options. One is to talk about basically this theoretical, typical country and its society that is somewhere around the median of the world's immigration laws and somewhere around the world's median economy. That's option number one. Option number two is focusing on examples your judge knows. The country that you are from, the country that your judge is from, a country that your judge has lived in, these are places that you can choose to focus the debate if you want for the sake of context. The third option is the broader definition of society, to look at it in a more worldwide situation, in which case any one particular society's barriers don't matter too much. But if you look at how border control is dealt with in different parts of the world, 
at different times, in different ways, by different countries, what their relationship between immigration and citizenship is, whether that country is trying to attract more people or trying to keep more of its own people from leaving, you can get a wide variety of different arguments on this. So, in particular, I think that you can refer to specific legal barriers for immigration and you can isolate the harms or the beneficial effects of specific policies, but you need to show how this is indicative of a larger trend rather than an isolated incident. Otherwise, you are not showing something on balance. Refugee policy is immigration policy if the con side can make it that. Pro does not want to let them make it that. Pro wants it that is a separate issue, that is a humanitarian issue rather than an economic issue. Obviously, the lines between the two blur, but the more distinct the lines can be, the better shape Pro is in there. Overall, when you're looking at whether something is beneficial, sorry, more harmful than beneficial to society, it's probably best not to try to total up the harms and total up the benefits and do the math that way. It's probably best to set up in a way that these benefits are going to solve for the harms or these harms are going to prevent the benefits. Both of you are going to do the math differently if you each try to add it up, and the round comes down to whose math the judge likes better or whose math feels truer to the judge. You don't want that. You want to be making prerequisite arguments. You want to be making internal link terms. You want to be making arguments where the harms that these barriers cause prevent the benefits that they are talking about from lasting in the long term. These benefits that they claim will arise won't ever happen if we don't solve for the harms first. Figure out how the arguments interact with each other, which one comes first, which one enables, catalyzes, slows down, or prevents the other. That's going to be particularly important on a topic like this because on balance, again, aside from the thought experiments we talked about at the beginning of this, isn't a particularly helpful way to evaluate this as a mathematical formula. Rather, the balancing act shouldn't be, we've got this many weights on this side and this many weights on this side of harms and benefits and here's how they even out. We don't particularly want to do that. What we want to do instead is say, here are all the harms. Until we take these harms off, it's too steep for the benefits to be put on. If we try to put the benefits on, they just slide down and become more harms. That's the kind of balance we're actually looking at here. We don't want to have to get into, okay, well, this is going to help 3.4 million citizens, but that is going to hurt 3.6 billion citizens, but they're only being hurt 80% much as one's being helped are. So overall, the net benefit over the net harm comes in. You don't want to do that. You want to just say, these harms make the benefits diminished or impossible. These benefits, if we get them, mean the harms don't matter because the benefits will solve for the harms in the long term or the harms will be worse without the benefits. One thing to keep in mind on the con side of this topic is that you don't want to talk about it in isolation. You want to talk about these are the harms of increased immigration or talk about these are the harms of stagnant immigration. These are the harms of the opportunity cost. These are the harms of not doing this and be able to compare and contrast those two. You don't just want to be in a situation where you have to defend the benefits of your policies in a vacuum, but the benefits of them compared to other potentially more harmful policies that would exist without them. And these come from other kinds of barriers that are not legal. There are other things that stop immigration. A country being a less attractive place to come to stops immigration. A country having its own people leaving stops immigration. A country treating immigrants badly can stop immigration. You can certainly make arguments that without legal barriers to immigration, other people in the country will take matters into their own hands, and this can create a kind of xenophobic backlash, which on balance is more or less not harmful to society, depending on which side you are on. 
I don't think that this topic is really about should borders exist or not. If you approach it from that broader angle, you get into a situation where the other team is going to outbalance you. If you prove that barriers ought exist and they prove that the current level of barriers is beneficial or harmful, that puts you in a worse spot than them. I don't think you need to pick a particular legal barrier to say should be eliminated. Anyone need to pick a particular country. But I do think that it's not really a policy topic, but it's not really a parliamentary topic. It's somewhere in the middle. This topic isn't asking us what to do, but it's asking us to evaluate what is. So we don't need to pick a particular course of action, but we also don't want to get so vague that we're just talking about should we have borders or should we not have borders, but on balance are the current ways that borders are enforced for the specific purpose of immigration, over-enforced or under-enforced. And really, that's going to be what creates the best clash in rounds like this, when both teams can just agree, we're going to debate whether or not the barriers that we have right now are good enough that we want to keep them at the current level, want more of them, or bad enough that we need fewer of them to be beneficial to society. And then it comes down to, well, what is society? And if society is multiple entities, which of these entities is most important? With the pro team arguing that the actor is the one who is creating the legal barriers to immigration and that that society creating the barriers should be considered its own society. With the con side probably taking more of a broader sense of, let's look at reciprocity. Let's look at how this affects other countries. Let's look at how these barriers affect both the country people will be coming from and the country people will be going to. Overall, it's the more balanced of the two topics coming up internationally. I do think that it is still a topic that gives the con side a slight advantage, but I think the pro side has a lot of flexibility in terms of different kinds of barriers and different examples. As you're ranging from places that are practically hermetically sealed, like North Korea, to places that are trying to encourage increased immigration through different kinds of barriers, like Thailand, to places that are trying to prevent refugees, like recent places that are trying to prevent refugees, such as Greece and Turkey. And overall, the team can do the best balancing act of these, and that can show why its harms or benefits spill over to affect the other team's harms or benefit. So under both teams' conception of society is going to be the team that wins the debate. Hope that helps. If you have other questions, feel free to pass them on to me. I can certainly try to do a follow-up on those.